the domestic supply well. Sampling a groundwater well with three volume perch. By knowing the depth of the well and knowing the depth of the water via a dip probe, uh, you can calculate the volume of that casing. And you want to pump out three vol at least three volumes of that casing. So what I find is useful when you're out in the field is to have a form such as this for all your calculations already. So say you had a 20 metre deep well and it, the water level is 10 metres, nice and easy calculation. You've got 10 metres of casing filled with water. Then you've got your diameter across here, so say it's 150 mil. Just go across, so you need to pump out 530 litres of water. Once you've worked out your flow coming from the pump, say it's half a litre a second, it's simply going across and finding your closest value. So I see it's 530, so we'll go to 600 litres, 20, meter, 20 minutes at half a litre a second. So to establish the purge volume, you need to dip the well first by simply inserting a dip probe in the well and lowering that until it beeps and finds, finds the water. And then you can uh, subtract that distance from the top of the from ground level to the water from the total depth of the well to calculate the volume of water in the casing. So for this well, it's 20 metres deep. Water level was 10, 10 metres. So that's one, so we've got to pump out 530 litres, which is 180 litres for one volume. Depending on the pump rate, the pump rate for this pump is one litre per second. We'll pump out 530. So that is about 20 minutes. Will be ample time. And you simply record across here. Uh, so 360, yeah. So these are your your three volumes, and once you've done your three volumes, that and then you should have a representative sample from the aquifer. The key point is to find a sample point that is as close to the well as possible, um, the well pump rather. So if there's a submersible pump like this well, so you've got power cords and things going down, the water level is quite if it's below sort of six or seven meters, usually you'll have a submersible pump. So you can put a sample point anywhere from here back, closer you can to possible, uh, the better. So for me, it's here. So I just disconnect that line to make sure it's not doing anything first before you start disconnecting things. And uh, yeah, you, can, you can go from there, just connect up. Whatever sampling sort of manifold you want is up to you really, as long as it's, uh, I like these sort of setups, they're durable, easy to come by, these are just from a hardware store, you've got various valves, you've got your sample lines, these fittings are quite useful for just altering your flow direction depending on your setup, um, then you've got purge lines and flow sales, so flow sales of course you can buy from manufacturers if you wish, or you can build one. As long as the water comes in the bottom and flows out the top, that will be sufficient. And the meter. There's a pH 4 and 7 buffer. Oh, yep. I don't do a 10 because the pH waters I of the waters I go to generally don't go above sort of seven. Right. So a two point reference is more accurate than a three. Um, if you're doing coastal environments, it might be different. Mm. So it really depends on the water that it's going to be going in. Um, ORP is just the standard ORP reference. It's uh, 263 millivolts plus or minus 20 or 30. Connectivity, I do a 100 micro semen and a 1413, um, just because conductivity of groundwater is very low. Okay. And dissolved oxygen is to a 100% um, solution yeah. and a 0% once a month. So a purge line, nice and long, is useful. And you can just decide where you want to put that, whether there's a garden somewhere or whatever. For here, 
just going over here. Alright, so there we're good to go. All you need to do now is start the pump. So now you've got that purging, you just keep keeping on the time. Uh, record the or note down the field parameters every volume. So for this it would be 20 minutes for three volumes, so seven minutes or so. Record your field field parameters. And once you've got two cons consecutive readings that are stable, after that three those three volumes, you're good to collect your samples. So I like to run the sample point continuously during the purge process to give it a good flush. So we've um, calculated our purge volume and flow rates. The flow rate for this particular well is one litre a second. So it might not look that here, but you've got to take into account the water that's flowing into the storage tank behind it as well. So that's your entire flow. Uh, just speeds things up if you calculate the entire flow, not just what's coming out of your uh, flow cell um, and purge lines, otherwise you'll be here all day. So with that in mind, uh, this well will be purged in 20 minutes. So we have been there and the uh, field parameters have stabilised. And then we, so from here we can go ahead and collect our field parameters and fill up our bottles. So we have, as we run through, uh, just the de deep details of the program and the site and the sampler. So uh, location, date, name. Um, weather information is fine, hasn't rained, uh, northeast breeze, taken a digital photo, the wind speed is calm, temperature 23 degrees, etc, etc. Uh, arrival on site, and these are our purge ca calculations here. So uh, it's important to record the equipment you're using for your fuel parameters. So this is a YSI um, Pro Plus, and then just record the accuracy of the sensors within the meter, which can be found either with the spec sheet uh, that comes with the meter or online. Water temperature. 13.4 Go down, measure our dissolved oxygen, both milligrams and percent Conductivity, make sure you have the correct units pH, LRP uh, and turbidity if you have it and depth for water which you record at the start of the process when you first arrive and record your depth to water to calculate your purge. Uh, water samples, so sample number, ID, it's two in this instance, it's 20196834. Number of bottles will be four, field filtered, yes. And time is very important for micro samples as they need to be analyzed within 24 hours of collection. Of course, you only have three, three rinse. Now put the lid back on, give it a shake, that way you get your lid, gets a rinse as well. Put in a clean filter for your filtration. Get rid of the old one. New filter, be careful not to rip it or tear it. Whether you use one like this or one of these small yellow plastic disposable filters is up to you. I prefer these, so that is entirely your choice. The thing to remember with these is when you are pulling the plunger out, don't have it in here because you can tear the filter paper. And that's the standard three rinse. Now the NEMS requirement for flushing the syringe is a minimum of 20 mil. If you've got nice clear water like we have here, it doesn't hurt to do the whole thing. Hold the 
the syringe off to the side a little bit to the angle so if any drops come off the bottom particularly if it's a rainy day they won't fall in your sample just a little technique so that the nutrients you fill right to the top and the metals bottle if they have a um, acid preservative you don't want to fill it right to the top just to the neck so you can mix it is sufficient micro bottle, important thing, uh, don't touch the inside of the lid or the bottle, so take the lid off when you're about to fill and that's it, don't need to rinse it, it's already sterile, you're only measuring bacteria here so that's sufficient, leave a slight gap at the top, just a wee bit of air, like so. Pick up your samples, ready to be sent away. Plenty of ice. Make sure they're all labelled and ready to go. Pick up two sites. I just like to wrap them up a bit in between sites just to keep them cool for the day. At the end of the day, uh, you may want to repack with fresh ice to send them away. And then it's a matter of turning the pump off to how it was, returning any valves or fittings to where, how they were when you turned up important to keep your sampling gear, uh, particularly the sample point, sterile. So I find keeping it in a little container like this with a bit of uh, decontamination solution of some description, whichever you choose to use. Open up all your lines, pop it in there, close it up, a bit of a shake around. And they can sit in the back of the truck to your next site. So the last thing we do before we send the samples off is fill out the chain of custody form. Uh, so it's a fairly simple procedure, just uh, your name, the reference of the program that you're doing, whatever that may be. For us it's groundwater monitoring quarterly north, um, contact details, uh, sample dispatch, much the same again, just who dropped them off, whether it's, so for this case it's the same sampler as the sample dispatch, it might change depending on your circumstances. Additional notes, um, you might want to include things like samples were too turbid for field fil filtering or um, you want to add a additional test that's not in your original quote, things like that, anything that pops up, it's usually just something that may also may affect the um, sample itself. And then this is for the lab. Down here, so you tip the type of water, groundwater, river, stream, lake, or coastal, groundwater for us. Samples have been field filtered, yes. And then just the sample name, date and time, and test required, so I've written as per quote. So once you've filled that out, Place it into a sealable plastic bag to put in with your samples, make sure it doesn't get wet. Seal it up. Place it in with your samples. And done. temperature? 7.1. And the range you accept is? Um, under 10 degrees. Okay. Thanks, <laughs>